even though you were getting the green light at every step of the way and getting amazing feedback, that you know was no guarantee that you were going to get anything on the other side of it. You're listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with your host, Michael Palmer. Listen each week as inspiring guests share their secrets of success to help you increase your confidence, work smarter, and build a business you love. This episode of The Successful Bookkeeper is brought to you by purebookkeeping.com, the proven system to grow your bookkeeping business. Welcome back to the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Palmer, and today's show is going to be a good one. Our guest is the CFO and co-founder of Amica, which is a cloud-based platform that allows business owners, professional accountants, and bookkeepers to automate accounting operations. Martin Chi, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Michael. Great to be here. It's great to have you. And uh, Martin, uh, I'm sure our listener is wondering and would love to learn more about you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your career journey leading up to this point where you uh, co-founded Amica? Well, I mean, in in the earliest earliest stages of uh, my career, I was actually in, in hospitality which my, uh, my father, he and his family, they were always uh, in hospitality and he, uh, he owned a Chinese restaurant for a number of years. And, you know, being a family business, you kind of get roped into, roped into these things. And, you know, so I kind of started there washing dishes, serving tables, uh, and then, you know, managing, uh, managing things. And at the same time, I was uh, studying a uh, degree in business and um, majoring in accounting and, and HR and managed to pick up a job in accounting uh, as well. So I was kind of juggling juggling a few things and it, it was an interesting time to get into accounting. I mean, I, I, I always had an interest in computers and, and technology and, you know, when I was a lot, a lot younger, I used to be one of those kids that would pull apart a computer and put it back together again and like to understand how everything kind of worked. And, you know, I think that kind of set me up well. It was always there in terms of, you know, the interest I had in uh, accounting technology in particular. Um, so I think that was something that was always in the back of my mind. But, um, you know, in terms of the startup, the startup journey, uh, my, my best friend who I went to uh, high school with and then subsequently university, we'd sort of done business together he was in commercial banking and and i was in public practice accounting and i would refer him business from time to time and he'd help out some clients and there was this particular problem that uh, existed within the bank and you know it was to do with the exchange of information financial information so you know if you wanted to borrow some money you'd have to prepare your financial reports and you know email them across and then what the bank would do is is take that information uh, and, and typically in hard copy, you know, this is, well, eight, eight, nine years ago maybe, um, and then they'd data enter that in to another system. So that uh, kind of seemed a bit illogical that the information existed already within an accounting package and, and you know, you were having to manually data that into some other system. And, of course, you know, there were errors that happened in that process. And then also it was incredibly time consuming. You know, it, it would take something like three or four hours, something ludicrous. And, um, you know, it wasn't done particularly well. So the output was was quite terrible. Uh, so we actually, one of the first sort of ventures that we had was trying to solve that problem. And it, it was uh, incredibly bootstrapped you know n- neither of us had a, a technology background so we didn't really know what we were doing in so far as managing a development project and you know we basically just posted a, a a few ads in different universities looking for student developers and you know we kind of whiteboarded some prototypes and had to play around with a, with a few things and um, yeah fortunately we found a a competent student developer that, uh, you know, he, 
he was very confident uh, in what he said he could do. And unfortunately, you know, his skills were, were good enough to put together uh, something that gave the appearance that it was functioning. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we sort of pitched that product to a few people and, you know, managed to get in front of a bank. And, uh, you know, we were thought we were on our way to millions. And then we realized that, uh, you know, enterprise deals with banks, uh, <laughs> you have to be a, a serious, uh, legitimate vendor, let's say, you know, not guys that are sort of moonlighting a startup on the side of their full-time jobs. But it was a great experience, you know, and, and a great experience from the perspective of we just learned so much in a really short space of time, you know, not just in terms of the development process and product ideation and, and, and project management, but, um, you know, it, it's great being able to conceive an idea or a product, build it, and then be pitching that commercially, you know, to another party and, Obviously, that's what uh, you know. Startups are, are kind of all about, you know, trying to get people to say yes to your crazy ideas. <laughs> that's so cool. And so, did you manage to have that particular software make it into a bank, or did, were they like, "No, we're 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 only dealing with enterprise companies"? Yeah, yeah I mean, the, you know, there was a, a a high level of interest. There, it was just like you know we were woefully underprepared in every other in every other regard. But I mean that product, in many ways, it, it kind of evolved and you know it it, it became what Amica is today. Um, particularly from the perspective of you know shifting shifting information from one application to another. I mean that's always kind of at the core of what we do it. Amica, you know, whether it's an integration or whether it's an automation. Um, but we did, you know, the, the, the company has been on an interesting journey and uh, that, that was kind of a product that evolved and we kind of pivoted a little bit because the, the enterprise deal side of things, one, it's, it's very hard to scale. Um, but two, you know, as a startup, you have to have either an amazing amount of confidence and certainty that you're going to close a deal within a relatively short space of time. Otherwise, from a fund, funding and a financing perspective, you know, you kind of have this really long road ahead of you where you might invest, you know, 12, 18 months into getting a deal across the line, tick every single box along the way. And we kind of went through that experience. Like we, we met with a lot of banks, you know, having evolved that product and you know, we were quite confident that we were going to get a deal with, you know, at least one of them. But, um, you know, it's just you're dealing with so many people, you know, you'd be pitching to one person to start with, then four, then 20, and then it would go through a series of committees. And, you know, that, that process would take so long. And even though you were getting the green light at every step of the way and getting amazing feedback, that, you know, was no guarantee that you were going to get anything on the other side of it. So, you know, as a startup, you kind of have to be very careful about you being productive with the time and, and having your resources be productive. And, you know, it, it, there's a lot more risk involved in that where the success of your business is really dependent on a large organization saying yes, you know, rather than where we are now, which is, you know, we're, we're much more mainstream and mass market you know, and, and convincing small businesses of the value proposition is a lot, a lot easier. Yeah, the, a conversation, a deal can be done in 30 minutes versus 30 months. And, uh, and with one, one person, one decision maker, it's dramatic, but incredible learnings by the sounds of it. Absolutely. Would yeah. you say, which, I mean, that sounds like a massive obstacle in your journey. How did you, what was it like making the pivot? Was it challenging to kind of go, okay, well, nobody's going to buy this. I can just imagine you going into a sales call, you're trying to build this, this company and it's like, Hey, we, you know, it's not tough to get excited <laughs> about well, this might actually happen in 12 months, <laughs> right? When you're, we're trying to put things together. Was it difficult to make the change or what, what had you finally say, okay, we got to do this differently. Look, I think it was, you know, we, we, we'd given it a really good go. 
in terms of pursuing those deals. And, you know, so it, it definitely wasn't for lack of trying, but, you know, it was a, a combination of, of, you know, we felt like we'd, we'd given it a really good go. And then it was a combination of, you know, we don't really want to be going back to investors for funding for that kind of pursuit when we didn't have control or, or as much control over the outcome as, as we would want. Uh, and in terms of the pivot, it, you know, it wasn't too difficult from the perspective of we had already by that stage developed a range of products on the other end that were, were servicing the small to medium end of town. So, yeah, I mean, it wasn't like a, a really crazy dramatic pivot on our end by any means. You know, it was more that, you know, we there was some reorganization of resources and, you know, which ultimately was a good thing, you know, because it just focused the business rather than had it split, you know, in two where you kind of had two two sides of the business pursuing different things and positioning themselves differently. And, you know, so there was a bit of a, a, bit of a unification uh, of resources and a refocusing. It wasn't a, an overly dramatic thing or, or something which caused a lot of disruption, fortunately. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. So now, now you've made that, that switch. You've been doing this for a while. Tell us a little bit about how this works. Like it's automation. We kind of get this, you know, the idea of like just that great example of, you know, here's some digital information. Let's print that out and then we'll put it back into another digital system. I mean, it's, it's crazy and, and we laugh about it now, but it, it, in the past, it happened so much. It was, you know, they made television comedy shows about it. Still happens today uh, in big and small businesses. But for our listeners, explain how how your solution actually helps them increase their margins and grow their, their bookkeeping business. Yeah, so I guess um, to provide some perspective on, you know, overall purpose and, and vision, you know, and from a, a bit more of an abstract uh, perspective so we you know you touched on it where things exist digitally now but the, the mere fact that they exist digitally doesn't mean that you can readily use them or use that information in multiple ways from a vision perspective you know we kind of have this philosophical view that if the data exists digitally the user should be able to control that information and use it in whichever way they want and that's not really something that happens currently, you know. So if you have um, information within an accounting package or information with a point, within a point of sale system or an e-commerce platform, that information, if you want to migrate one to the other, is, you know, not, not seamless, let's say. And therefore when the user is trying to extract value out of that information, it can be quite difficult and time consuming. And so one of the goals that we have is that it doesn't matter really where the information is sitting, as long as we're good enough at translating that information and making it comprehensible to the layperson, and not just comprehensible, but also usable in as many ways as possible, whether it's automating sending that information to a, an accounting package or whether it's automating sending that information to a particular templated report, distributing it to you know your team, you should be able to do that very, very easily. So all of our products are kind of centered around that, that portability of information and that understanding of what, what actually that information comprises of and, and how you can gain value out of it. And so at, at the high level, trying to achieve that, there are a lot of challenges when you take that and, and look at it at the grassroots technical level. And so from a technical perspective, you know, when you're dealing with multiple accounting packages, multiple point of sale, e-commerce packages, you know, all these different software packages, you know, whilst things very basic things might be labeled the same and, and we can universally understand them in the same way. So, you know, if you're talking about a CRM system, you know, first name is always going to be first name. You know, it's not going to be any weird interpretation of what first name means or what last name means or what date of birth means. But even taking that one small value of date of birth, you know, that, that can be inserted into a piece of 
data in a range of ways and formats. And if you take that concept and you apply it to other values that might be attached to a transaction. Um, so in, in point of sale land, you know, if you're processing a transaction, you have an item, uh, you know, the item might have a name like sandwich, you know, it might have an SKU attached to it. Um, and then it'll have all these other numerical values. Like, is there a discount attached to it? What's the sales price? What's the tax component? Uh, and all of these values, uh, are labeled very, very differently depending on the system. And not only can they be labeled differently and the terminology be different, but also the calculation of those values can be different. The time or the point at which they appear in a transaction can be totally different. So, you know, there can be all these incredibly complex conditions that change and alter the information. And we have to spend an incredible amount of of work analyzing and understanding these things in a very common generic way. So uh, one of the core functions that we have is to act as a type of Rosetta Rosetta Stone where we're interpreting this information and we're standardizing it into our own format. And that's incredibly challenging, you know, not just for the reason that I just outlined, but also for the fact that these products evolve over time, APIs, develop and, and, and change over time, you know, and, and sometimes these things are changing quite dramatically too. So, you know, it can give the developers a bit of a headache <laughs> when things do change because things, things then can break. So, you know, at, at the core, you know, there's this idea and this concept of being able to understand the information that we're receiving. There's this concept of being able to use that information um, and have it being very portable so that we can allow the user to use it in a number of ways, send it to a range of other applications so that they can derive a lot of value out of that information. Yeah, and again, you know, reflecting on, on, on sort of how we got started in the very early days, it all kind of built, built upon that. It's that there's so much useful information that's generated within whatever app it might be. And, you know, we started in point of sale, in the point of sale space, you know, and, and within that space, like a, a single transaction might have like 400 different attributes attached to it. So, you know, you can imagine how many insights you might be able to derive out of that information. But typically users don't have an easy way to get hold of it and control it in that way. Um, which is, you know, it's a bit of a funny thing. I mean, you, you, you think you, you would have that ability as a user in this day and age, given how many apps there are and, um, you know, how, how many things there are to, to sort of assist you with interpreting that information. But, um, yeah, we're, we're sort of nowhere near, <laughs> nowhere near that outcome. And, and so, look, for, for bookkeepers and accountants and small businesses that use our products, one of the main things is obviously saving time. So, you know, we're, we're typically automating, fetching information, uh, let's say from a point of sale system or an e-commerce platform and, and inserting that into an accounting package. So, um, so we work with, with, with all the major accounting packages and taking that example of, let's say, an integration with a point of sale system, we would allow the user to basically synchronize that information every day we would allow the user to have some flexibility in the way that they would like that information sent to their accounting package. So, you know, let's say they've got a a particular requirement to send certain revenue streams or certain sales transactions to a particular general ledger revenue account. Uh, We would allow that. And, you know, we try to make things as convenient as possible in terms of the reconciliation process. And we also, you know, from the perspective of being able to format or transform that information and and send it into an accounting package in the way that you want uh, or the way that you need. The idea is that in doing that, you can generate the most value out of bringing that information into your accounting package. So, you know, rather than it just serving as a kind of, you know, let's say reconciliation function within your accounting package where you kind of understand, okay, today I made you know, $1,000 in credit card sales and $500 in cash sales and, 
you know, $100 in gift card sales. You know, you can bring that other information attached to that, you know, so it might be how many, you know, of a particular product you sold or the totality of um, a, a category of products that you sold or, or, or it might be how much you sold from a particular uh, outlet that you operate, you know, if, in, in the case that you've got multiple locations. Uh, so it's a, it's a combination of, you know, you're, you're saving that time because you're not having to manually jump into a system, look at a dashboard, play with some filters, export that data, you know, do a manual journal entry and into the accounting package to reflect it. But it's also that you're getting much more use out of that data because you can bring it into your system the way that it needs to be so that, you know, let's say you're generating some reports, you can actually view that information there in a meaningful way so that you can actually make decisions based off of it. It sounds very cool. And I mean, just knowing systems and do just all the work that we do uh, and all the different pieces that go together in any any small business, uh, it, it, it boggles the mind. How would you recommend that our listener introduce this type of automation tool into their own tech stack? Yeah, so I mean, f- fortunately, we're, we're ca- kind of in a space where it, it makes sense to be doing this. You know, like it, whenever, um, you know, you're, you've kind of got a product offering, which is a, a genuine replacement for manual data entry, I think, you know, that's probably a compelling enough reason to adopt it. Um, but in, incorporating it, you know, with all of our products, we, we, we build them uh, with the view that we want them uh, to be as simple as possible. And we do a lot of work in terms of making sure that that journey that the user needs to go through to configure these things, whilst you know they have a lot of flexibility and you know they can uh, alter things you know the way that they need to, and that can be very complex uh, if they would like it to be. But um, you know we try to distill the process down into you know a handful of steps, and you know then guide the user through you know, a mapping process, let's say, you know, but we also have the view that, you know, whilst it's a, it's a very tech focused product and, you know, it's very easy to connect without any assistance. We have an amazing support team that's there to basically go and configure things for you. And, you know, when we started out in the early days, that was one of the things that we really highlighted that you know there are barriers to adoption with a lot of these types of uh, information and accounting integration products oftentimes just due to the complexity of what the user had to interface with so we um we we had the view that accountants actually would make the best support people (laughs) and you know that that kind of really worked well for us i mean we, we received some amazing reviews for our support so I guess what I'm saying is even if, you know, you wanted to be completely, let's say, hands off, you know, in the adoption process, you know, you could because, you know, you would have an accountant uh, effectively there understanding what your requirements are and, and configuring things accordingly for you. And we always like, you know, our products, that there's sort of a, a process that you go through initially. And then after that, you know, it's kind of very, very hands off, you know, so we, we, we don't like to have a product where you know the user has to feel like that they're needing to maintain this additional thing and you know it, it is overwhelming you know in this uh, day and age because you know businesses now they're not run on you know one or two or or, or three apps you know they're on like 10 15 apps sometimes more and you know if you're a, a business owner and you're trying to run your business or, or even if you're a bookkeeper or an accountant there's only so much knowledge that you can have over so many apps, particularly at depth, um, you know, and, and, and even from an accounting practice perspective, you know, again, you, you've probably got 10 or 15 apps doing various things, um, you know, whether it's practice management, time recording, payroll, you know, like all these kind of different, uh, different things. So it just becomes a bit 
overwhelming and, and, and impossible to, to have knowledge in everything. So, you know, we kind of like to have our apps just kind of operating there in the background and um, d- doing what they need to do without the user having to constantly check up and, and interfere in that process. It, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, the, the point that I was going to uh, ask about is, and, and really feel myself just knowing all the systems we use, is that, yeah, we can't be an expert in all of these things. They're constantly changing. It's kind of like putting all of that over to you and saying, hey, you know, we got all this data over here. We got all this need for the data over here. You take care of making sure that it gets there and gets there right and does it on time and, you know, done the right the right way. And that's exciting for, I'm sure, many, many listeners is take that off of their plate. When it comes to some of the wins that you've seen, obviously you have customers, lots of them using this. What are some of the key wins, you know, where people are, you know, uh, use case, those exciting use cases where it's like, wow, I was able to do, you know, move this over here and save me all this time. Do you have any stories like that? Yeah. I mean, you know, in terms of our accounting integration products, you know, the, the wins for users is, you know, it's, it's, it's that time element. And, you know, typically if I take a hospitality, um, customer as an example, I mean, logistically, that's such a tough business as it is it's dealing with how you resource it, how you deal with the logistics of having uh, f- food arrive, how you deal with the logistics of prepping and, you know, converting that raw, <laughs> raw material into a finished product. And then, you know, dealing with another layer of how you then serve it out to the customer. And you know, there are just so many, so many hands on various processes within that industry. And, you know, it's very difficult to understand how you're tracking and, you know, specifically what what might be making the business successful and, and work well. And, you know, like the bookkeeping and, and accounting, uh, typically the neglected components of uh, those kinds of businesses. You know, so in, in terms of from the business owner's perspective, uh, n- not having to deal with you know, having a point of sale system, which, you know, there already is this great depth of knowledge that, you know, needs to, um, needs to exist in terms of how to use it, you know, just on a day to day basis. But, um, you know, it's, it's empowering and convenient for the user if that information from a finance and accounting perspective can, uh, can be extracted and, you know, pushed into an accounting package. And I mean, you know, in terms of success stories, a lot of them always center around, you know, it, it's great to be able to have that information automatically pushed into, you know, the accounting package. And, you know, literally, I don't have to do anything. It's clicking, okay, yep, that that reconciles, because it's 100% accurate. So, you know, not having to uh, invest a lot of time in that admin side of the business for business owners just you know, means they can focus on the activities which really generate them value. You know, so a lot of the stories are, are centered around not having to spend that time. And it, it's funny, particularly in hospitality, it's like, you know, you have that, that kind of image of the business owner, you know, slaving away on a table, you know, doing all the uh, admin kind of stuff after the close of business, you know, and we kind of eliminate quite a lot of time in that process in particular, but also, you know, we do a lot of automated reporting and, you know, sometimes it's the case that business owners aren't really looking at that information in a structured way. So, you know, what you find with a lot of apps now is that there's a lot of functionality around, you know, you might have this great dashboard and it's got a lot of nice uh, visuals and different widgets that you can play around with. But as, as humans, we're not particularly good at approaching it or approaching that information in a structured way. So, so what I mean by that is that you kind of get given all of these bells and whistles and it's like, what are the steps as a business owner or as a user are you going through to make sure that you derive the most value out of understanding that information. And, 
a lot of people just kind of approach it in an ad hoc way, whereas you know you, sh- you should actually be approaching it in a much more structured way. You know, identifying the important you know KPIs or variables that are going to then allow you to make decisions on the day to day, which are going to have an influence on you know wh- whether it's the overall performance of the business in terms of sales revenue or or whether it's making smarter decisions in terms of purchasing or resource allocation, you know, that, that allow you to increase your margins. And, and so in terms of our automated reporting products, you know, we kind of like to distill the information into a series of metrics where someone can just look at that and go, okay, you know, I, I understand, you know, generally what makes the business successful, what's driving sales, you know, what, what might be poor, poor performing products or, you know, even where perhaps, you know, there are times of the day where sales aren't particularly good and perhaps I've got too many people that are, that are working at that time, um, you know, and so th- having information and having data available is, is all well and good, but, you know, unless you've got some kind of actionable insight out of it that is going to cause you to make a decision um, that's either going to make you more money or save you some costs, you know, it's kind of just a, another pretty widget sort of sitting there that you don't don't really utilize. So, you know, we, we kind of try to simplify things in a way where um, as much of the interpretation of the data that, that we can do and as much of the simplifying and packaging up of the data that we can do for the user, you know, we, we will try to do that so that then, you know, we can sort of sp- spoon feed them with some insights that then, at the very least, will will lead them to ask a question about their business or, or to someone within their business to say, hey, you know, why did we do this? Or can you explain this? Or, you know, what can we do um, in this regard better? Very cool. You know, when you think about a tool like this, it, it really does speak to taking the the pressure off of that the 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 organization that our listener taking the pressure off of them doing the work where they set up systems they set up automation and it's i just think of it like the a tool in the tool belt yeah absolutely and this tool can do so many it's like it, it's not like this you know the tool it's not a screwdriver that just does a, a robertson that's a canadian term <laughs> or a phillips right yep. this is like a, it's like a screwdriver that's got like a million heads, right? It can twist all sorts of bolts and nuts and screws and all of that in a business because there's so many apps out there. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, and it's, yeah, it's can, crazy. can be overwhelming. So I'm really excited about these kinds of apps and this one in particular because of what it can do for our listener and how it can set them free, give them back more capacity and time to to do other more valuable things in their business. So it's a real real power tool I'm thinking here and uh, sorry for the tool and analogies here, but (laughs) maybe Father's Day is coming up quick. I've got my mind on some new tools. Um, But how can our listener learn more about it? Maybe get going on it, take it for a test drive. It sounds like one of those things that they really should be spending some time learning more about and how it can help them. Yeah. So, I mean, the best way to learn about the system is uh, to go to our our, our website, uh, amica.com. A-M-A-K-A dot com. Um, you know, we've got uh, a lot of information there, but, uh, you know, also, you know, we've got a support team there that's more than happy to take you through products, take you through a bit of a demo so that you've got an understanding of the uh, the capabilities there. You know, and, and just reflecting on, you know, the amount of apps and, and tools there are out there at the moment, I think... The thing that um, people tend to miss, you know, when they're ad- adopting new pieces of software or or trying to identify even opportunities where perhaps there might be software that they can adopt that will automate some things, it always is valuable to reflect on and document the processes that take place already. And, you know, it's it's helpful to do that because then genuinely it allows you to identify the areas which 
you're spending a lot of time and understanding, you know, is there a friction point, whether it's because, you know, there's just a sheer volume of information that you're processing manually and, and perhaps you shouldn't, or, you know, there is just a process which is time consuming because you need to log in, you need to play around with the dashboard, you need to export that data into a CSV, you know, whatever it might be. You know, and a lot of people, they kind of just don't go to that level of detail. And it's it's really important to be able to articulate a process in a series of very small steps. And that way, you know, whenever you're uh, assessing or vetting software and trying to understand what kind of value it might be able to deliver to you, you know, then you can quantify things uh, and be a bit more objective about it. Because I, I think the tendency is sometimes, you know, we, we adopt software as a bit of a fad. <laughs> you know, it's like I don't have this kind of uh, tool, you know, so and I know other people are, are using it. Maybe I need to adopt it as well. You know, so I'd say there's always that need to reflect very carefully on the, the genuine problem that you're solving or, or a particular series of steps within a process that you're that you're solving and you know that that way you don't fall into this trap where perhaps you're you're adopting this software that you think is going to save you time and and produce all these wonderful outcomes but actually it becomes another headache to uh to maintain and and actually can create you know additional work and and have the opposite impact but uh yeah i mean look in terms of uh, reaching out to us the best place is our website you know, we've got a great support team that's more than willing to help you to uh, to demo the products and understand, you know, how they can help them run their businesses. I love it. Well, we will make sure to have a link for our listener in the show notes for that, Martin. And I know I'm excited about seeing and learning more, and I am sure our listener is as well. And so I want to thank you for being on the show and sharing with us your business journey and as well some cool things that you're doing to help our community improve their efficiency and do better work in their businesses. Thanks, Michael. And with that, we wrap another episode of the Successful Bookkeeper podcast to learn more about today's wonderful guest and to get access to all sorts of valuable free business building resources you can go to the successfulbookkeeper.com. Until next time, goodbye. You've been listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with Michael Palmer. For more information and to download the resources mentioned in this episode, please visit us at thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Thank you for listening.